Greetings everyone. In this video, we are going to get a nice little introduction to do loops. And we are going to look at uh, how you can structure a do loop. We're going to look at four different ways to configure a do loop. And uh, to give us a problem to work on, a context, uh, we are going to use the following spreadsheet. And we are going to start over here in, in row A4, or in cell A4. And the objective here is we want to know uh, how many rows in this table are filled with numbers. And it's quite common in Visual Basic programming where you want to append some information to the end of a column or a table. and or you just want to know how big the table is so you can write code to copy paste it using Visual Basic or something like that. And so it's really common to start somewhere and then loop through the cells until you find an empty cell. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write some code that starts at row 4. It loops down until it finds an empty row, which in this case would be row 21 and then it displays that number using message box and to begin with we are going to do that using what we call a do while loop and uh, so let's jump right in we're going to go into design mode and then double click on this first button and let's start out with our old friend option explicit and so we're going to declare a looping variable called my row as integer and so this variable will keep track of what row we're currently looking at. Um, we had another set of videos on a, how to use the for loop to uh, traverse through uh, a set of uh, integers or a set of objects. And a do loop is similar to a for loop except it's a lot more flexible. Um, you can have any kind of iteration you want. You can exit under any kind of condition. but uh, but what you need is some kind of, uh, in this case, a variable to keep track of where you are. In this case, obviously, we would need to know what row we're on. So we're going to initialize that as my row uh, equals zero, or excuse me, four. We're going to start at row four. And then uh, we're going to say do while cells my row comma one is not equal to an empty string. And then we're going to say my row equals my row plus one. And then you end up with loop. And then at that point, we are ready to do message box. Uh, the empty cell is on row. And then we'll do ampersand my row. Okay, so let's review a little bit. <clears throat> We're going to initialize the uh, my row variable to four. That's going to keep track of what row we're looking at. And then the structure of our loop is follows. Do while cells my row comma one not equal to an empty string. So when you compare the contents of a cell to an empty string, that's uh, a really simple way to determine if the cell is empty. And so this expression here basically is testing to ensure that the cell is not empty. And we're going to keep looping as long as that condition holds true. So a while, the, the while form of the loop means keep looping while this condition returns a true value. Once it is false, then you stop. And then each time uh, as we iterate through the loop, we do this line of code. <coughs> which basically adds one to the row counter. It's, it's, uh, it does what we call an increment. It says take the current value of my row, add one to it, and store that in, in my row. So that's, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, instances of this by now, so that's just how we increment that row counter. And then once we exit the loop, then we uh, pass that row number onto the message box, and we should be good to go. So let's try that, and it should work. Exit design mode, and sure enough, the empty cell is on row 21. If we were to 
generate some more rows here. Empty cell row is on row 24. So that seems to work just great. Um, to illustrate how this works, let's uh, jump over to the editor. And uh, it always helps when you're studying loops to, to uh, step through it in the debugger. So um, let's give this a shot. I'm going to remove that breakpoint now. So I'm going to hit the F8 button. And uh, my row is now initialized to 4. Cells Myro, comma 1 will reference that uh, first item in the list, 2.8. And uh, that, when you compare that to, to the empty string, it is not empty, so that's true. So now it's just going to keep uh, looping like this. It keeps incrementing the, the Myro counter. And it just keeps going until what row are we on 21 so we're going to go to like 24 so i'm just going to keep hitting the f8 key 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 and now this should have an empty value in it in which case that should return false and so it finishes a loop, goes down to the next line, and pops up the message box. So that's how it works. Very basic, um, very simple structure. So let's now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing, but instead of using a do while loop, we're going to use a do until loop. So let's double click right here. And um, we're going to, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to copy that code because most of it's going to be the same. But now instead of <clears throat> using a while loop, we're going to do until. And in this case, we need to change the uh, not equal to symbol to equal to. Because with an until statement, everything else is the same uh, as before, except uh, with, with the while loop, we loop while the condition is true and with the until format we assume it's false and we're going to keep looping it until it becomes true and so we just have to negate the, the logic here or we flip the logic around a little bit so we're, this basically says uh, keep uh, looping until uh, you encounter an empty row until cells my row comma one equals empty string so yeah, it works pretty much the same way, or it gets you. This should get to give us the same result. So sure enough, it uh, whether you use the do while or the do until, we should get the same result. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> there is actually two more ways we can do this. Now let's jump in now and do the option number three. And in this case, I'm gonna paste that from the clipboard again but instead of doing the condition at the top we do the condition at the bottom and so we're you can do that test at the bottom now the only difference here that the the looping structure is pretty much the same the only difference here is it's always going to execute uh, whatever's uh, between the do and the loop at, uh, at least once. Now, by the way, in the, each of these loops, I have um, one line of code, but um, you can have as many lines of code as you want between the do and the loop, and it works just fine. And I like to indent my loops uh, between the do and the loop, so it's clear what is being iterated each time through the loop. And so this should work now. Let's. Uh, this is a do loop while, so if we exit here, we notice this still works. Now, we have to be kind of careful with this because when you do the, the, when you test the conditional expression at the end of the loop, you have to remember that this is always going to be executed at least once. So let me show you something here. I'm going to go back here, whoops, and I'm going to temporarily, um, <coughs> Uh, paste this code right over here. And so what if uh, we have, we're have we starting out with an empty loop or an empty column? Uh, the correct answer in this case would be the empty row is on row 4, but watch what happens. It says the empty cell is on row 5. 
And why is that? That is because uh, it starts at row four and then it never really checks row four. It immediately increments it to row five with this line of code. And by the time we check it, it's on the next row and it says the empty cell is on row row five instead of row four. So one simple way to fix that is you could change your initialization so instead of starting at row three it starts at, or excuse me instead of starting at row four it starts at row three then it increments it once you're on row four and now it should work the empty cell is on row four and if i copy these numbers and put them back and do it again it says the empty cell is on row 24 which is correct so um, that's the only caveat with that um, with having the condition at the end. You always have to remember it's going to do whatever's uh, in the inside of the loop at least once. All right, so now we're on to the last one. Do loop until. And in this case, we're going to take our int until code we did right here. And I'm just using control C and control V. And then I'm going to. Uh, do control X and control V. We're going to move that uh, conditional expression or test to the end. And once again, we're going to change how we initialize that row counter. We're going to start at three. And now if we go back, save our changes, it should work just fine. So we have four different do loops, each of which is structured differently. Half of them use while, half use until, half have the test at the top, half have the test at the bottom, and they all uh, solve the problem uh, perfectly. Now, you may be wondering why would I choose to use one of these over the other? Um, if there's some circumstance in which you need to execute the, the lines in the loop, um, before doing the test, then you'd want to put the while or the until statement at the end. Otherwise, um, you know, choosing between a while and an until, in a lot of cases, it just comes down to style, what seems the most intuitive to you. And hey, if it gets the job done and it's easy to understand, go for it. Um, that's one of the fun things about programming is that uh, there are a lot of different ways to, to solve the, the same problem. And so that uh, concludes our introduction to do loops.